Oh, there we go. Hello, folks. Welcome again. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And it's Tuesday. Or will be Wednesday soon. Let's see here. Get my spacing down a little bit. There we go. And because it's Tuesday, it's time to talk about some Impact Wrestling. And also, as a little bonus, some NWA Power. So, uh, let's start off the show. Again, I always like to start off with the shout-outs. Uh, Big Sale 59. One day, I'll have a much more powerful computer, a better camera, and a better microphone one day. And I'll have a better software. So I think this is the AVS Video Recorder, free off the internet. And then I have my $30 Movie Maker. So one day, things will work. I know live streams a lot prettier. You, sir, got the six count. Joey's life. You, sir, are doing the funky tunes to your briefcase boombox. Bobby Smith, you are an honorary member of the El Generico Band. Jay Tay, you'll see me again in the comments for the Kevin Scampoli show for AEW's third hour. Um, one day I'll try to cipher something because I did get that, that pretty interesting picture of Britt Baker just being totally non caring. You, sir, are my tag team partner.
Fralala too. Yeah, I can actually read my own handwriting this for a change. You sir, and thank you for your comments on Discord. You can crawl on out of here now. And then finally, cool guy, because you are the cool guy. You know how to do the air drum and air guitar. I hope that's a heater, not a toilet running. That would not be good. So let's talk about some Impact Wrestling. Again, it is a Tuesday. Impact is still on the Axis Network. They were only banned from Twitch because of Rob Van Dam's antics. Again, a little, a little, a little too much, and we'll get to that later. Uh, starts off the show there in Mexico City, Mexico. So I've changed up things a little bit. Actually, I have to. I should probably write them down. And actually, I'm going to do that. So I can actually remember. But instead of having, say, something was a surf and turf, because they're in Mexico City, Mexico, that'd be a yummy plate of mongo. So let's see here. Let me. Just, I can correct myself a little bit as long as I see stuff. Oh yeah. So again, I've kind of altered things a little bit because they are in Mexico City, Mexico. Going to give them for some Mexican food, just kind of like I did with my NXT takeover in Cardiff. Where I gave it English food. And whenever they're in, or whenever they go across the pond, I give it the English equivalent of like a ham sandwich. It was was a it was a chip buddy. Thank you, Slicks. Um, even though I think a couple of people did say what's when I asked what's the equivalent of a ham sandwich, they said, eh, it's, it's probably a chip, buddy. But Slick says they also have ham sandwiches over there in England, too. I guess that ham sandwich is universal. I, I wonder if they have ham sandwiches in Mexico. I know they have the fried sandwich. Um, oh, what's it called? Like a torte or something. But it's like bread, they stuff it with meat and like fry it. It's their version of like a street sandwich. I'm probably getting that wrong too. Uh, so this show starts off the promo. I'm kind of surprised because they're in Mexico City, Mexico. I guess there is the crowd doesn't care. Or they speak English well, they speak gringo well enough. So Tessa starts off the promo. Then Taya Valkyrie comes out and says, well, I'm champion too. I'm going to be tied at two belts. Ace Austin is like, wait a second. Only way to do this race is to have a threesome. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No. no. Ace Austin wants all three belts because he's the X-Division champion. And Trey still upset at Ace Austin because Ace Austin hit on his mom. That, that that's, that's just so bad. They caught to an interview with Willie Mack again. Willie Mack had an amazing match, hit the Super Canadian Destroyer. We still lost the tag team battles. Remember, that was a two-on-one match. Uh, so Johnny Swinger's there. 
Oh, Johnny Swinger. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Swinger. Um, yeah. That's all you can say about Johnny Swinger. And then Kier Hogan and Madison Rain, they confront Ty. It's like, we want our turn for the belt. Kier Hogan's almost too cute to fight for the belt. Madison Rain in this picture looks like a soccer mom. Oh, well. So the first match of the evening, we have a Wild Kingdom special. Because we have Moose. 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 Taking on Rhino. Taking on Tauros. And Taurus, again, I guess Impact does do a lot with Triple A. Because Taurus, I know, is in Triple A. Because he was in Triple Mania. <laughs> Triple Mania, I'm, I'm hoping it reverts back to the Triple Mania of a couple of years ago. Because that was just entertaining. Last year's was really good. And it was free, too. And again, if you go into my archives, actually, the, for the most part, the entire Triple Mania show. I think I missed one or two matches because I had that. I had a date earlier that evening. I came home, ate some nachos, some margaritas, and watched Triple Mania. And that was actually pretty good. You know, it's one of my mini archive videos. But so Moose, again, yeah, Moose is like, you two guys can fight it out. He just rolls out to the outside. That's smart. Why get involved if you don't have to? A Taurus for a big guy does that flippy stuff. He obviously does all that stuff in Triple A too. That's amazing. I still don't know if that's that or that. I don't know. I'll check it soon. I'll just make this video in 13 more minutes. Um, Rhino's Rhino. It's pretty good. Uh, again, most most of the match starts off. It starts off Rhino versus Taurus. Then Taurus and Rhino said, uh uh. We see you out there, Moose. So they start to corner Moose. He has to run back into the ring. And then they start a proper triple threat match. Uh, Moose heads back. Again, for a while, it just seems like a Delirious and Colt Cabana thing match, which just made me smile. It's, it's fun. Not super serious, which is always good. Um, again, Don Callis is, is funny in this. Just the way the angles um, kind of, kind of moves at the miscues. It's funny. It's like, no, here, I'm holding him. You hit him. He's like, okay. And then he goes, ducks down and like, like jumps over both of them. It's like, whoa, he wasn't supposed to do that. But that was really fun though. Moose is definitely the heel. He, he just teases a form that says, eh, thumb to the straight thumb to the eye. It's like, you know what? I'll go get you. Wait. Ah, thumb to the eye too. Uh, Taurus, he does a two rope splash. I don't know how he did that. He jumped from the one rope to the other rope and then just did a splash. That's semi terrifying me. Uh, there was no gore because Moose moved the ref into his way again. He did the same thing in Heart to Kills. Uh, and then Moose just kicked him straight in the balls. However, Taurus. Oh, wow. Triple A. Pull a victory here. And let's see here. This is actually will be a surf and turf match, but because this takes place in Mexico City, Mexico, this was actually a yummy plate of mofongo. Then Joey Ryan, for some reason, Joey Ryan was going to go to L Lucha Court. So I don't even know what that was about. I wanted to see that though, and and I want to know what the Spanish translation is for 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 you for you sick, uh, because Jerry Ryan's mass match was next, taking on Maximo, and I guess there's a third type of wrestler in Mexico. There's the Tecnico, the Rudo, and now there's the Exotico. So Jerry Ryan was taking on Maximo. Uh, Jerry Ryan he tossed the lollipop in the crowd. Someone actually put that lollipop in his mouth. If you don't know where that lollipop came from, folks, Joey Ryan ugh, reaches all the way down in his trunks, pulls a lollipop out of his trunks, and only sticks it in someone's mouth, or this time he tossed it into the crowd. Someone said, I got lollipop. 
probably not the best way to get a lollipop. Uh, then, of course, he goes back in. He does the traditional wrestling thing. It starts all the way up here. Oh, takes out the body oil. Oils himself up. Oils himself down there. Goes up. I'll save this for later. Puts it back in the trunks. Oh, there we go. And now he's ready to wrestle. Uh, Maximo. Maximo is fun. They start trading pinfalls, which is good. Uh, Maximo eventually dropped the elbow. That was great. <laughs> and then Maximo gets Joey Ryan. <laughs> and Joey Ryan has absolutely no clue what's going on. But then, of course, Joey Ryan hit the dick flip onto Maximo, where Maximo grabs him by the privates, and he goes, ah, and flips him over by the power of his groin. And then he pulls out another blow pop and does sweet tooth music, sticks it in Max Maximo's mouth, kicks it. Well, yeah, this was a fun match. This was a burrito of a match. And then we had RVD. He's going to be in front of me. He's like, ah, I don't have time for this. Uh, Katie Forbes is there and her top said censored. Gee, I wonder why, Katie Forbes. Considering you were the reason that, that Impact had banned from Twitch. Because cause you showed Arioli. Yeah. Go look that up, people. Yeah, something women can't show on Twitch. And then Mike Hogan cuts a promo. The next match, it was Jessica Havoc versus Rosemary again. <sighs> it was okay. Um, Rosemary again starts to beat up Havoc a lot. Hit a hurricane on her. That was great. Then they were trading forearms. That was fun. Uh, Havoc eventually, they would wrestle a lot on the outside. I don't know why the ref just doesn't use a simple 10 count and count them both out. Oh, wait, they have done that before. Instead, Rose, uh, Havoc gets Rosemary up for the small drop onto the steel ramp. Uh, Rosemary hit a flying forearm. Oh, off the top rope. That was pretty cool. Then, of course, there was kind of a spine bust. Uh, oh, a spine breaker by Havoc. So Havoc had her. Dropped her across the knee of her spine. Put Rosemary back in kneeling position. Then hit a clothesline. Kneeling clothesline. Ooh, that just looked vicious. Uh, and then James Mitchell gets on the ring side. Again, he's a distraction. He gets slapped for his efforts by Rosemary. However, Rosemary was distracted. She gets the two, she eats the tombstone pile driver. And Jessica Havoc wins this match. So that's twice Jessica Havoc's won. Hmm. I wonder if Rosemary's off to NXT soon because she's losing a whole bunch. Generally, wrestlers do go out on their back. And Susie went somewhere. Susie! Susie! No, that's just she's for. No, that's a wall. Uh, Susie! Oh, no. Susie left. So this was a fun match. This is another... Burrito of a match. Then we had a little promo from the Desi Hit Squad. That was okay. I'm sure it's told the other Sunil Singh. Or oh, I'm getting a Singh confused. No, I'm getting Raju confused. Yeah. I do get the Bollywood boys and the Desi Hits quite confused. But the other guy, he, um, Shira just said, I sent him to go contemplate and meditate. And Gama was not too happy. And he just smacked Rahit. That's, that's what Rahit does. Then we're in the treehouse. Trey is like, no. Can't do anything. Tess is hot, but no. He just, just wrote Tessa a love letter. Listen up, Trey. Unfortunately, Tess is seeing someone. Name's Daga. He probably beat the heck out of you. Especially in Mexico. That would not be good. Uh, then, <laughs> Rascals, they were on some bad trip from eating from Peyote, I think it's called. It's like a cactus. 
again, it, people have said this, and they said, oh, there's, there's, there's UFOs. Listen, the reason why UFOs are found in the desert, one, there's a bunch of airfields in the desert. I've personally seen a B-2 bomber do corkscrews. That happened when I was fishing in New Jersey. And they had, like, the air show. And you see this big B-2 bomber, like, literally do, like, corkscrews in the air. Now, you're eating something you're not supposed to be eating. Probably drinking something you're not supposed to be drinking. Smoking something you're not supposed to be smoking. You're dehydrated in the desert. And you see, like, weird lights. Yeah. If you saw that B-2 bomber doing corkscrews, you'd be like, oh, man. The aliens, man, they blew my mind. But yeah. So so they were like that. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Psycho Clown, I think, and Murder Clown show up. Two, two of the many clowns in AAA show up. It's like, whoa. <laughs> I guess that's, that's a prelude to the next week. And then Eddie Edwards, he has the trophy and actually put a face on it using tape. Eddie Edwards is this full-blown cuckoo now. Then we have Rahit Raju taking out Willie Mack. Return of the Mack. Return of the Mack. Now, this is actually a pretty fun match. Uh, Mack, for the most part, took control of the match. Again, with forearms and kicks. Um, Shear eventually pulled out Rahit because Willie Mack was going to go for an elbow. Mac, Willie Mack over did a somersault sent on over the top rope onto everyone. Uh, the, Mac, the Mac was doing the Ma Mac Mac Reina. I forget how the rest of that goes. But um, and then he, then he did his standing moonsault, which is amazing. Hit a stunner. Uh, that pin Rahit Raju, but then Shira. Just came in and started to beat up Willie Mack. And then, for some reason, Johnny Swinger came to the age of the Mack. And the Great Gauntlet just started to beat up everyone, too. This is okay. This is kind of one-sided. This is a taco of a match. Then we have the North. And they confronted El Hijo de Vikingo. Which, for those of you who don't know Spanish, means son of the Viking. Yeah, it was okay. I guess he's going to find a partner and he'll fight them next week. Uh, this is like AAA in my, uh, Impact Invades AAA. Ooh, that's a good title. Impact Invades AAA. Impact Invades AAA. Then the main event of the evening, you have Ty Valkyrie and Ace Austin, the two heels, the Rudos, taking on Tessa Blanchard and Trey. And I don't think the crowd really likes them because they were chanting stuff. I think I know what the one one word meant, but I'm not too sure. Um, I'm trying to think of it. Yes, it's, it's Perro. Which I guess is not good, I guess. I always thought Perro and Dog. But my my knowledge of Spanish is so limited, though. Again, feel free to correct me in the comments and, and emails and other stuff. Or you can put up an angry video that says, This hobo does not how to, know how to speak Spanish. So it starts off with Ty and Tessa quickly turns to Tessa versus Ace, and then it's Ace versus Trey. And then all of a sudden, we have flippy stuff all over the place. Love, I love Lucha style. This is probably the fastest paced match of the night. So it was really good. Um, it winds up on the outside. Taya. Taya got caught by Ace Austin, and she was having none of that stuff. And then that, of course, led to a double dive by Tessa and Trey onto Taya and Ace Austin, respectively. Uh, Taya, again, that's slap. Wow, she can lay one mean slap down to Trey. Then there's a running basement drop kick. Ty is really good. I'm surprised WWE hasn't been in contact with her before. Uh, Tessa was 
trying to hit a package pile driver, but uh -uh, not happening. Ice Austin knows exactly what's going on. Uh, he get, eventually gets back in the wing. Uh, again, Tessa, she has her frustration. She gets distracted. The rest distracted. He has his back turn. She goes in the ring and leads to further distraction. And then, of course, the card comes out and the card cuts fingers. Kind of more annoying than anything else. Trey did hit the turtle stomp, though, and the ref didn't see the tag. Uh, kind of common in AAA. Tessa hit the cross, cross body splash. That's always awesome. The tilt roll DDT by Tessa. And then Kaya swept Trey off the rope, so he fell down. Tessa took a dive. She's on the outside, so Ace Austin hit the fold. And Taya Valkyrie and Ace Austin win. And at the end, Ace is like, give me a hug. She's like, I'm not touching you. Whereas Tessa Blanchard and Trey, they hugged it up. This was a fun match. This is also a Mofungo match. I'll tell you what, Impact was a pile of fun. It's taking place in Mexico. It's different. It's such a good... I think my only thing about this whole show is that it felt very WWE-ish for a long... I guess I'm so used to seeing, like, just, like, opening match. They do, like, a quick five... Like, two to five minute recap. And then you have, like, the Deaners taking on the Desi Heat head squad. The Deaners probably aren't even welcome in Mexico, though. But, again, overall... That's a burrito of a show. Let's take a little break. And we'll come back with some NWA action. Oh, there we go. Everything sounds back to normal. That's always good. So no, wait, I still need, wait, I don't need this though. So again, came back from a little break. It's time to talk about some NWA action, because wow, this was NWA's go home show to their pay per view. Um, maybe that's called Into the Fire. I think. Maybe that was a past one. I don't know. I know this weekend. They're going to have their pay-per-view on Friday. I'm working. I have to do stuff to pay the bills. Oh. That's not good. I'll have to check that in a little bit. Just turn off. Well, it was a little full, but that's okay. Let's talk about some NWA action. I'll just have to make this video kind of quick. There we go. It stopped again. I don't know. They try to make things. A lot more complex than it should be. But that's okay. Life goes on. Life finds a way. So I'll be working the races, so I'm not going to watch any pay-per-views, except for the Royal Rumble. I'll probably take a nap during it. Hope my other boss got, got my schedule straight. Hope she'll like what I have to say about my work schedule. Coming up. So I have to do that tomorrow. That and that. Oh, truck has to be paid for, and truck insurance has to be sent in the mail. I know that's weird, but so a recap starts off. Well, NWA starts off with a recap. Um, it was a Robert Gibson interview, which is always fun to see, and the first match of the night. Was Tasha Steels versus Thunder Rosa La Mara Mara? Uh, Thunder Rosa is very quickly becoming one of my favorite female wrestlers. She just has that look about her. Um, I like the way she does her half face paint. She does half her face paint like a candy skull, which is kind of cool to see. It definitely takes from her Latino background. Her Latina background. I don't know if it's something like that. Viva la Rosa! Again. <laughs> the little Spanish I learned. I learned from pro wrestling because I, I learned, remember, I learned Spanish the hard way. Professor Garcia, 
think Senor Garcia was from España. He was actually from Spain. Uh, Professor Mendez Faith was from Uruguay. And my native speaker, whose name I can't remember for good or for bad, was from Puerto Rico. But between those two, three people, I can never say anything right. And I, I figure I can order, I can, I can say no more, see, um, introduce myself politely to a woman's parents. Uh, como esta usted? Como se dice? Mi amo es Tom. And Camila Pollo y Cerveza. I can say, hi, how are you, very politely. I can order a chicken and a beer. I can say, no more. I can say, yes. I can say, how do you say? And I can tell you what my name is. I don't know. Cero. Miedo. No fear. And then the other one I know. Cabello y mascus. Hair versus mat. I think. I'm always getting that mis mispronounced. Speak yeah. I'll have to ask again. I'll I'll worry about that come like football mania. When they always have hair versus mask matches. Um so again, this was really fun. So Thunder Rosa, again, it's very quickly becoming one of my favorite wrestlers. I just hope if she goes anywhere, it's AEW. If she could do so much good for AEW, she'd just be another woman in the WWE or even NXT. NXT's women's division is stacked. Although I could see, I forget if Thunder Rosa was ever in Impact, though. I forget if she's been. Triple A, or she used to be in CMLL. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but Thunder Rosa, uh, again, it's quick going by Tasha Steels until Thunder Rosa takes control. That knee by Thunder Rosa. Oh, and then the attempted dragon sleeper. That's always fun to see. And then she does like the triple neck breaker, like three short neck breakers to her knee. Boing, boing, boing. Uh, well, that was really good. I think that's, I think that's just a toilet. But overfilled itself. I have to fix it one day. And then, oh! Thunder Rosa had to tear in the pantyhose. Thunder Rosa's going to need some new pantyhose soon, folks. That's pretty cool. Uh, Tasha Seals missed. Yes. Top row moves. Pander to the crowd too much. Again, listen to Steve Bear. Don't pander to the crowd. Uh, Thunder Rosa did like some reverse backpack driver. And then she was singing an interview, and the only thing that takes away from the mystique of Thunder Rosa and led to this being a burrito... Oh, oh, actually, actually, since we're back in the States in Georgia, this was a cheeseburger match. And the only thing that took away from the mystique of Thunder Rosa is that she speaks English. I like it when the... I'll say this very loosely. Foreigner speaks their native language. Like when Asuka speaks Japanese. Oh, so good does that sound. Uh, when Thunder Rosa was speaking Spanish. Oh, oh yeah. Give me more. Because she just sounds so... It just sounds different. So when she starts speaking English, she's, you're like... She can speak English? But wait. Two weeks ago, she couldn't say a lick of English. She was like yelling at people in Spanish. No, she has to make her mind up. I prefer the Spanish version, La Mera Mera, of Thunder Rosa. I can roll my R's better than most Puerto Ricans can. Ouch. And then Isaacs and Faye Valentine came out, and so does Austin Idol. I know, they give a promo, then there's an Austin Idol promo. And I was shocked because I actually saw empty seats in the NWA arena. I'm like, whoa, especially in the front row. Never, never empty. They had to use the bathroom or something. Then it was Tom Latimer taking on Trevor Murdoch. It's just a brawl. It's strike heavy. Murdoch is getting beat up by Tom Latimer. 
Yeah, Tom Lattimore hit a pop-up powerball on Trevor Murdoch, which looks amazing. Trevor Murdoch is no small guy. But however, Trevor Murdoch won by a roll-up, and he held the tights. Which is a very, again, WWE thing. You know, this is a go-home show. This, the way it unfolded, was really a ham sandwich of a match. Then Melina comes out. Um, Melina and Allison Key. Allison K get good in it. Um, and whoa! Melina dropped the F bomb on air. They actually edited up. They had to say, saying, I will beep you up. Oh, wow. Or she will get beeped up. Yeah, but it started with an F and not a B. It's like, whoa. Drop the F bomb. That's awesome. Uh, and that title looks. Oh, fake. It looks like, seriously, like I made it. Because it looks like, like the ancient May Young belt. Because it, it has Alice and Kay's picture in it. And I'm like, is that real? That looks like something I made. Which is pretty bad. I can think that I can make it look better. That's not necessarily good. And then we had Alison K taking on her friend Marty Bell. And Alison K goes right after Marty Bell because the stipulation is if Alison K defeats her best friend, Marty Bell. Again, so this is the battle of best friends. Battle of former best friends never over goes that quite well with no DQ. Alison K will get a title shot from Thunder and she'll get to face Thunder Rosa at the upcoming pay per view. So it has so, so, some meaning. Uh, there's, there's a yay boo moment. Marty Bell will strike her boo. Allison K would strike her, yay, yay, boo, yay, boo. They did that. That's always fun. Uh, then they started bringing chairs. And Marty Bell had to go to like, the cook closet to get chairs because everyone's like, oh, she's leaving the arena. She, she went beyond the door. Where'd she go? So, yeah, she went to go get a chair. But obviously, you have to learn to put ch chairs underneath the ring so they're more accessible for the wrestlers to use. But it wasn't like some like room closet. So she brought a chair in. Yep, I did a vicious neck crank on the chair. That was pretty good. A chair shot to the next session was okay. One of these days, one of these days in MWA, baby, where equal opportunity juices. One of these ladies got to bleed. That actually be kind of cool. I haven't seen that, I think, since Joshi. I think they really did away with it. Before that, it would be ECW, I think. That's going back a while, though. Even the Joshi stuff, I think, was 2012, 2013-ish. So again, it goes back a while. Um, so then, of course, they use a chair for a neck crank. That's pretty cool. Um, there was a miscue, the knee to the chair. Oh, Marty Bell just rammed her knee into the chair. And then, see here, they got back in the, into the fence. They go, and that was, there's, there's always seems to be that one wrestling fan who has like, why are they here fighting in the crowd? Because she was just there. You could tell she was probably brought there by a boyfriend or with her family. Who the father figure probably enjoys wrestling and remembers the old school NWA. I'm sure the boyfriend enjoys wrestling too. But she is, I don't even think she was in a wrestling team. But yeah, she, she's just like, huh? Why are they here? Are they supposed to be in there? Are they fighting in the crowd? This is weird. Like, should I move? She's, and you can just see her, like, stare at other people and like, stare at them. It's like, What's going on? I don't know. That happens every so often. Then you go back to the ring. The, the chair goes into the ring. And of course, Marty Bell's Ali, Ali, Alicia K was going to nail her with a chair. And Marty Bell's like, Oh, no, please, let her 
best friends. Please, I didn't even wish it. So Alicia K puts the chair down. Marty Bell started to crawl through the chair. Alicia K put her foot down. Uh, uh, uh. Not very good for Alicia K again. Begging for mercy, the chick. Uh oh. She got Almighty slammed onto said chair. Very good. The heel gets our comeuppance. Elise, Allison K wins the match. A good solid cheeseburger match. Then there's a bunch of weird stuff on Nick Aldis recap. Again, this is their go home show, so this is kind of expected. Uh, Rock and Roll Express recap a little bit. A uh, thing between Pope and Kingston. Then with a question mark, has more followers. He's they're gonna have a karate, a Mongrovian karate expose. Uh, Aaron Storm goes in there, starts to starts to sh sh show off his stuff. He's gonna give a little expose about what he's learned, kind of breaking boards. I mean, most of the very typical karate tropes. But then the student, and of course, they brought in the hardest wood available, Mongrovian oak. And he's going to break it with his bare hands. And the student took it, and he smacked Aaron Stevens in the back, and you're like, whoa, the student has become the master. No, it was, it was Ricky Starks. And Ricky Starks is a promo. So that's pretty good. And there's a Tony, a Tony Falk thing. Talked about how he was a wrestler. And then we get into NWA's version of a Royal Rumble. I guess they can't call it a Royal Rumble, so they call it a gauntlet match. Uh, same rules as a Royal Rumble. Two men enter, then every so often, and they try to do the countdown for it. And it would be their version of the gauntlet match. So it starts off with C.W. Anderson versus Caleb something. Yeah, I forget his last name. Uh, again, C.W. Anderson, very classic. C.W. Anderson's been around for a while. Country wrestling was really good stuff. I'll tell you what, they did some classic, like, takedowns. Then Josephus, who, who's banned in NWA, came back. And he got into the ring, and immediately, over the top he went, he's eliminated. But back to the wrestling match. Then Colt Cabana comes in. Punch for you. Punch for you. Punch for you. Oh, atomic elbow on one. Oh, atomic elbow on the other. Again, very classic stuff from Colt Cabana. Um, oh, it does a side rush in Lexi. Always fun to see it. The uh, sliding lariat by C.W. Anderson's look good. And then who's in there? Oh, Dave Dawson. The big guy's in. And the three... <laughs> Again, he just throws them all into the corner. The three men, uh, C.W. Anderson, Colt Cabana, and Caleb get tossed into the corner. There's a three-man big splash on one corner. Irish throws them to the other wing, does the same thing. Uh, falls on them, does a does a just splash on Caleb. But then eventually, they get Dave Dawson down. Actually, Aaron, Aaron Stevens comes in. He's next, and he just hides under the ring. He's smart. He's like, I'm not going to get involved. I'll hide. I'm mean, at the end. I'll, I'll be tricky. Uh, then, so... Rensaro comes in. The freshman in. He starts cleaning the house. Again, it was just... It was, it was kind of fun. Uh, I didn't realize he, he has Salmart on his trunks. That's pretty funny. Oh, uh, like, um, like Walmart... Shop or like S Smart, Shop Smart, Shop S Smart. Created one of the greatest movies ever made, Army of Darkness. I don't care what people say. Greatest movie ever. Bruce Campbell should get all the Academy Awards for that movie. Um, they should get every that movie should get every award. Uh, but then eventually takes a four man to pin. Dave Dawson, because in this, you can either lose by being tossed over the rope, pin, or submission. That makes kind of sense. Um, kind of like the Lucha Underground oh, tournament tournament of the gods or something like that. 
where it's a Royal Rumble, except for you can only elim be eliminated by pinfall or submission. Here you could also get tossed over the top rope. That's okay. I'm sh I'm, I doubt WWE is going to go after them for that. Then Zicky, Dame, Zicky Dice comes out, cuts a promo. Zicky Dice is a combination between Rick Rude, early DDP, and Chris Jericho. He's actually getting more entertaining. Uh, Mr. Anderson comes in again. He cleans house. Sal gets pinned after the mic stand. Caleb again. Double spring. Moonsault misses this time. He did it once earlier. Hit. This time it misses. He gets, he gets pinned. Mr. Anderson is doing really good. Um, C.W. Anderson gets the Superman pin from Colt Cabana. So C.W. Anderson's out. And then Aaron Stevens shows up again. Uh, so does the question mark. And there was a miscue because he wants to go do the double Mongrovian spike. Both Mr. Anderson and Colt Cabana. Because um, they, they were... Aaron Stevens somehow holding both of them. They reversed it. Aaron Stevens gets, gets the double... <laughs> Mongrovian spike and it's just like paralyzed, bouncing off the rope until he falls flat and gets pinned because he's paralyzed. He can't do it. He actually gets yeah. he gets pinned. So that's it. And then all of a sudden, so now it's on to Mr. Anderson and Colt Cabana, two friends in the ring. So they give a nice shake. But instead of that, Mr. Anderson just rolls up. Colt Cabana holding the tights. And Mr. Anderson is going to fill in the last position for the TV belt. And Colt Cabana's like, dude, what's up, bro? And th then he did, then Mr. Anderson did the mic check on him. And he hit the mic check on him. And he went head first into the post. And then I guess, I think he's actually the referee. He came out in like, like a Paisley t-shirt and jeans. It's like, Ooh, who's this guy? It's like, oh yeah, that's, that's one of the refs. Going to check in Colt Cabana. Mr. Anderson's in the TV title tournament. This was fun. It was entertaining. It took a little bit of everything from everywhere. This was a good, fun surf and turf match. We have Eli Drake and St. James Storm. Are they going to reform beer money? Beer money. Oh, I couldn't be so lucky. Then I guess there's breaking news. Every so often you'll see Ring of Honor wrestlers come to NWA. Ring of Honor is not doing well. Um, I think I have the option of watching Ring of Honor. The Briscoes. Oh, they got old quick. Um, I don't know anyone else in ROH besides like Cheeseburger, Jay Lethal, and the Briscoes. So now every so often they'll work with New Japan. I don't even know if they have that working relationship anymore. But, I mean, between AEW, NXT, and WWE, they like plucked all of the good ROH talent. And they're all gone. But of course, the villain! Martin Skull, yeah! Ooh, ooh. It's still an ROH. And so it's delirious. Delirious. Ah, 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 ah. Rattle, rattle. Um, the Nick Aldis comes out taking Ricky Morton in the main event of the evening. Uh, this was really a classic match. Uh, you can tell this was meant to really hide any deficiency that Ricky Morton had, considering he's like. I, I'd have to say like six years old, because I don't remember him wrestling. He wasn't young when he was wrestling. He he wasn't young when I was watching him wrestle. So again, a lot of headlocks, arm bars, very classic stuff. Um, again, Nick Aldis trying to pull pull what hair there is left on Ricky Morton's head, being the heel. Uh, Nick Aldis again, he would go in the corner, say, "Whoa, break, 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 break!" Everyone's stealing from Miano. Yano's so good. He's the one wrestler I do want to see. I, I'd be so happy if we had a selfie with Yano. I'd be like, I'm good. Uh, Morton, he does a lot of trash talking. Al, um, Aldis, again, was really good at counter-wrestling. There was a 10-punch in the corner. Um, 
outside the ring. He that's where he took advantage. When they're back in the ring again in the wrestling match, Ricky Martin put in the figure four. But then they traded small packages. And Nick Aldis won with a small package and a roll up. Oh, wait a second, I've never seen that before. Oh, I just saw that with a Trevor Murdoch match. Boo. They're doing stuff WWE is for their pay per views. Boo. Trust me, NWA, you do not want to copy what the WWE does. And then there was a message saying, This is brought to you by the Vivid Enterprises. Yes. Because um, again, he is uh, Mar the villain Marty Skrull is so good in Villain Enterprise. And his theme song, everyone just like, I can't even do it, but you just go, woo, woo. It, it's just such a natural thing to do, though. But this match was fun. It was a cheeseburger match. That was NWA. Really, for the most part, it was a cheeseburger show. And that was a Tuesday wrestling show. Again, fairly entertaining. Impact's pretty good. Can't complain about that. NWA? Yeah, a little rough around the edges, but still. So I think this show is only an hour and a half long. That's because it was a go-home show. That's definitely something you can wade through. It's not like a three-hour slog of Raw, because sometimes Raw's been a lot quicker, with the exception of the main events. The main events, for the most part, suck. Except for last week, that was definitely that had a big swerve though in it. This week's main events just sucked. Come on, it's terrible. I just want to see the spectator between Lana and Liv Morgan. That's all. But um, other than that, that's pro wrestling for a Tuesday. I'm gonna have my AEW review show up tomorrow. Probably do it a little bit later on because I'll be in the chat for the Kevin Scampoli the whole effing show. Um, eventually one day I'll skip there. I have to figure out how that goes eventually one day. Maybe I'll do that for the Royal Rumble. I'll, yeah, because every so often I do, especially when I have my, my own special shows, I'll do that for them. Um, Thursday I have Royal Rumble predictions. I might even do another prediction show for NWA, because I'll tell you what, Scott Steiner versus Aaron Stevens. Oh, that sounds just like such a squash match to me. That just sounds like fun. Um, so I might do that. Also Thursday. Friday's going to be SmackDown. No 205 because I have to sleep. Uh, Saturday, I have off because I'm working. Sunday, it'll probably be the Royal Rumble because I'll take a nap after work. I think the race is in 1.35-ish or 2 o'clock on Sunday. So I'll get home, get to the gym, take a little nap, watch the Royal Rumble. And then actually there's a special show coming up. Um, Friday the 14th in February, because that's Valentine's Day. My least favorite day of the year. But again, I'll have my special show up. I'll have the, this one goes out to all the ladies. So that'll be my Valentine's Day special. Then I'll have my birthday show. Birthday and Mardi Gras combined, because for some reason my birthday is on Mardi Gras this year. That's pretty cool. Although it is confusing. So I'll have that special show sometime in March. Yeah, March 3rd-ish. So, like, a week after my birthday, I'll have my two-year celebration. It'll be a little bit different. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll show something that goes on behind the behind the camera. Or I'll, yeah, I'll give you the insights of the Hobo Studios. And, of course, me singing karaoke and, like, videos of Match Past. Very quick stuff, though. I'm not going to do a whole freaking thing like that. That's ridiculous. But, oh, well. Yep, so that's kind of the plan for a while. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.